Today we're going to talk about the three D's of walls. Uh, density, distance, diameter. A lot of confusion on this. Let's hope that we can clear a little bit up. We have to realize that the way a room wall is constructed has a sonic impact. You hear it. I hear it. I'm sure you do too if you were in as many rooms as I did do and, and you're listening, but there's a big difference between concrete and wood frame in sound, okay? Density is a big issue in our walls when it comes to low frequency. Low frequency energy will go right through concrete, it'll go right through a wood frame. The rate and level of that process is what you're trying to manage. I have built rooms, I built one room in Tucson one time with three 80-inch walls of poured concrete on separate foundations with an airspace between them. And we had a lot of low-frequency energy in the room. I think we had two or three 15-inch low-frequency drivers. And I still had measurable bleed 30, 40 cycles through those three concrete walls. Now, it was insignificant in, in the whole picture, but nonetheless, it goes to show you how powerful low-frequency energy is. So... The density of the wall has a big impact on how low frequency energy uh, is contained in the room and maintained in the room because we have, you know, the attack and the decay rate that we have to be sensitive to. If we're discussing middle and high frequencies, the distance from those surfaces and off those surfaces, there's a sonic impact to that wood frame versus concrete. You can hear it. It's reflected in this, the whole equation of it. That's why in, in old days, if you will, days uh, when I was growing up, you know, concrete and rock and things like that were, were the elements that we used because they didn't vibrate, they didn't move. See, a wood frame wall will move. Never use two by four wood frame in an audio room. I see it a lot, but it's not good. I have actually put accelerometers on these construction methodologies and tested them. And you don't want a two by four wall. You really don't want a two by six wall. Two by eight is about the minimum you should have because it vibrates less. It goes diaphragmatic less. And there's auto, audibility thresholds that you can cross and it becomes audible. You got to remember that these are huge surface areas in your room. These are huge speakers, if you will. So density, distance for reflections, diameter, how thick is the wall for wood frame and concrete, the example we just walked through. Not all thicknesses work for all uses. And our big two choices, obviously, are concrete versus wood frame. And stay away from those steel studs because they rattle and move. You got to be very careful. And then I see a lot of construction methods where we have metal screws going through metal studs. Well, if the screw's not secure, you're going to have movement. So be very careful. So density, distance, diameter, all of these variables have to be taken into consideration. Remember, good room sound is a process of doing a lot of little things right and in the right order. So it's everything contributes to what you hear. And the better your gear and the better your room is, the more you'll hear these subtleties. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.